Hello and welcome back to Tea in the Deep Blue Sea. Thank you for joining me. My name is Victoria and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first video, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoy the video. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Cheers. So today's video, I have some general maintenance to do on my algae cultures. I have two culture tanks at the moment, both are Nanocoropsis occulta. So my tanks have been going quite a while, one is ready for harvesting, the other isn't doing so well at the moment, so I'm going to completely clean that tank out and then start a new culture with the harvest from the first tank. The rest of the harvest will then be stored in my fridge, ready to go on and feed my sea monkey tanks. It's a great source of food for them because they do enjoy eating algae and it's just fresh rather than the powders that you get from the sea monkey packet. So it's a great alternative food source and it's something that I can grow at home quite easily. So I hope you enjoy the video and learn something new. Cheers. So this is a three part series on algae maintenance. This is part one of three. I hope you will join me for all three videos. The first video is covering harvesting of algae. The second one is talking about the culture medium and the third is setting up a new algae culture. All three videos will be posted in succession. So there will be a link at the end of this video to the next one and so on after that. I really hope you enjoyed the three videos and learned something. If you've got any comments, please let me know down below. I really hope you enjoy them and thank you for watching. So today I'm going to be harvesting some algae. I have two culture jars set up here, labelled L and R for left and right, just so when I do take samples from them, I know which one it's come from and it's really easy to label up. So one of them looks a really, really healthy green colour at the moment. The other one's not doing some, so well. It needs a big clean out and I'm going to do that later. So as you can see, both of my jars are sat on the windowsill, so they get a lot of natural sunlight, which is great for growing algae. There is also some LED grow lights here, which are just plain natural LEDs, which also encourage the algae to grow, and the heat off them also helps the tanks. I've got two thermometer probes that go into each of the tanks, and they sit up just up here on the window. So you can see at the moment, one of my tanks is reading 25.9. And the other one is about 27.3 so that just helps me to keep an eye on the temperature and make sure they don't get cold but i find the algae is good around this sort of temperature 26 degrees i find is really really good for the algae growth and they get do get the added heat as well off the lights which i keep quite close to the tanks just moving them out of the way for the purpose of this video you can also see i've added an extra hole in the top for the airlines to go through so you've got a rigid airline here and then that just goes up to the top where there is a splitter and check valves as well so the water doesn't return to the pump. And they just connect down here all the way to the corner where there is a pump which is set on for 12 hours a day. So that's all automated and that just runs as and when I need it to. And I can turn that off by my phone because it's all connected to Google Smart Home. So that's what I've got going on. There's two air stones in the bottom of the tanks as well which are connected to the airline, so that's sort of my basic algae setup. So today I'm going to be harvesting my algae. The algae on the left is perfect and ready to harvest, so that's what I'm going to be doing. So there's a few things you need for this. A turkey baster, I have mine labelled because I've got one for my distilled water as well and I don't really want to mix them up. And also some culture medium, which I use RO water with reef salt. So I have some prepared already which is at 1.025 standard gravity, which is just a measure of the salinity of the water. So I have that prepared already. It's a mixture of reef salts and RO water, which is really simple to make up. And I just make them up in advance so I don't have to do it every time I top up my tanks. It's just simpler for me. But I will do a video on mixing up the different waters I use for various tanks and show you a bit more in depth about that. So you've got them, you'll need, and also something to put the algae in that you have stored. So what I use, I use these little drinks pouches. I've um, got the syringe attached to the back for when I use them to feed and I have a biohazard sticker on the front because these do live in my fridge and I don't want them to be mixed up with any food products or look like a health drink and for someone to ingest them. So what I do, the algae that I take out, you can either use it to start a new culture or to put in the fridge to store ready to feed your tanks with. So I use this to feed my sea monkeys um, so that's why the syringe is on the back for putting it in the tank so I can clearly measure the amount I use and make sure I don't overfeed them because that's a real common problem you get with sea monkeys. So that will get stored in my fridge and I can then use it for my tanks. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to harvest the left jar and store that away for use for my tanks. So 
I have turned off the air pump for the purpose of this video because I thought it would be very, very loud and very frustrating to have that going on in the background, but that would usually be on at this point. So, into the process of harvesting the algae. So what I'm going to do, we're just going to remove the lid here. Just unscrew that. And you can see the air stone is lovely covered in algae there. And also in the tank, we've got a hydrometer. This just floats in the tank to let me know what the salinity is. So you just drop it in and where it bobs to is where the salinity is. The salinity is a little bit low at the moment. It's sitting around 0.10. I like it to be in the green, sort of 0.25. So it's sort of a little bit lower than ocean salinity, which is um, 1.035, but it's 1.025 where I sort of keep it. It's a little bit low at the moment. But that's not a problem we're going to add some more salt in anyway because that's what's in here i'm going to take that out for a moment just so it doesn't get in the way but as you can see it's got a thermometer on the bottom as well it's covered in a little bit of algae gun because you can see that's not a problem we can give that a rinse before it goes back in the tank anyway but there's the green line of where you want it to be so when you culture algae you want to leave 30 percent in and take 70 percent out so you can measure this but i don't i just tend to do it by eye so we're going to take our turkey baster and a new pouch and we're going to take the medium out and put it in the pouch i've got one here it's already been labeled so we're just going to gather up gather up some and you can see here just popping it in and squeezing it into there and it's a really nice rich green color so as the algae grows, it'll start off quite pale and then the colour will increase as it grows in the tank. So you get a nice rich green colour, it's sort of the perfect time to harvest. I tend to harvest once every couple of weeks, but sometimes if it grows faster, you want to harvest sooner than that. But again, it's just sort of looking at it by eye and seeing when it's a good consistency ready to harvest. So what we do, fill up a few bags of this. It's just a case of repeating this, taking it out and popping it in. And I'll do that until the bag is filled up and then put the lid on and it will go in the fridge. I'll probably date mark it as well just so I know when it was harvested so I can use the fresher stuff first. Uh, the freshest stuff lasts, use the oldest stuff first, so nothing goes off. You can keep algae in the fridge for quite a long time. If you're leaving it in the fridge for more than six weeks, sort of make sure you regularly turn it upside down, give it a little bit of shake, just so you don't get any rotting algae going to the bottom of the pouch. But just check before you feed it to your tank, just to make sure that it still looks healthy and in good condition. So there we go, we have one pouch. Just going to secure a lid. On that and that is one pouch of algae harvested. So this is Nanochloropsis um, occulta that I culture really. So that is one pouch of that ready to go in the fridge to join my others to feed my tank. So I've got a couple more pouches to fill and then you can quickly see me doing that now. I don't want to bore you with that. And then we will top up the tank. So here we have four pouches of algae that I have taken out of my culture. These are going to be labelled and dated and then put in the fridge, ready to use for my tanks. These will take quite a long time to get through with my tanks. I can only feed them a little bit because they are sea monkeys, so they don't eat that much. Um, but they will store in the fridge for quite a long time, as long as you remember to regularly shake them. So the next step is to refill up the culture medium. So you can see we've got a little bit of green left in the bottom and the rest of the tank is empty. Yes, they are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stickers because if you grow in algae, which looks like ooze, what else are you going to do? So here is my prepared RO water. So RO is reverse osmosis water. So it's very purified water to remove anything, any traces of any minerals or ele elements, anything out of the water that could potentially harm the growth of the algae and also the shrimp that are going to be eating it. 
So I buy this online, which is really easy to get hold of from aquatic shops, and I add reef salt to make up the salt content, which I do to 1.025 standard gravity, which is slightly less salt content than the ocean. So what I'm going to do is just pour this, pour this back into the tank. You will see as you dilute the algae, it will lighten in colour ready for the algae to grow again. I sort of fill it up to there for now and then give it a couple of days and probably top it up some more. So that's nice. Just give that a little bit of a mix. So you've got, just to give it a little bit of a chance to all mix in. We can use our hydrometer here. Just wipe off some of the... Uh, algae that's got stuck to that and just pop it in so i'm gonna have to top that up now just so you can see where it floats to just drop that in So it's sort of sitting about 1.01 at the moment. I want that to be a little more salty than it is, so I'm going to make up some extra salt to add to the tank. And I'll show you how to do that now. So that was part one of three of my algae maintenance series. I will link number two right up here. I hope you go on to watch that. We will be setting up the culture medium for the new culture. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe and leave any comments down below. Thank you again for your support. Have a good day. Cheers.